I've pushed the Creality K1 Max to its limits for a year, printing pretty much non-stop. Did it survive my workload and become the high-speed powerhouse I needed? Let's find out. My name is David Gewertz. Welcome to the Advanced Geekery Project Lab, where I'm testing 3D printers for your entertainment and edification. After a full year of heavy use, is the Creality K1 Max really the high-speed game changer it promised to be, or has it started showing its cracks? From print speeds to filament frustrations, I put this machine through its paces day in and day out. In this video, we're diving deep into what's held up, what's failed, and whether it's still worth your money. If you're thinking about buying or you're just curious about long-term 3D printer performance, stick around. This program is sponsored in part by the Advanced Geekery Weekly Newsletter. Want exclusive access to my latest ZDNet articles, behind the scenes updates on my projects, and must watch YouTube videos curated just for you? How about fascinating reads from around the web and a chance to have your own project spotlighted? It's all in the newsletter. And the best part, subscribing is absolutely free. Don't wait, click the link below to get your weekly issue and make it awesome. Here's how this long-term review is going to work. Most 3D printers have a lot to like, but they also include their fair share of head scratchers and genuine annoyances. As I go through the review, I'll be giving everything I like a good, everything that's just plain odd a rating of weird, and everything that I don't like a point for ugly. Think of weird as a measure of what were they thinking and ugly as a measure of, uh-oh, that's bad. Let's get into it. I really like this machine, especially compared to the previous fully enclosed Creality printers I've reviewed, the Sermoon D1 and the Sermoon V1 Pro. It prints fast, it's got a large print area, and the touchpad user interface is pretty much vanilla clipper, which is a good thing. Creality print is helpful and useful, especially with thin lighting and camera. This is particularly noticeable compared to Creality's previous interface and its wackadoodle Kuva coins gamification. The K1 Max is an FDM, Fused Deposition Modeling 3D printer, which means it uses melted extruded filament to build objects layer by layer. Build area is 300 by 300 millimeters. There are smaller K1 and K1C printers, the C version gets a camera, but I'm specifically reviewing the larger K1 Max. Setting up the K1 Max was easy, except for getting it out of its wooden crate. It's shipped this way because the printer is shipped fully assembled and has large glass walls on three sides, plus a glass plate on the top. Extracting it from the wooden crate is an exercise in tool-assisted destruction. It was difficult to manage when it showed up on my front porch, and it was difficult to open without a lot of bending and pulling. I'm giving this the printer's first ugly because the shipping crate was such a pain to manage and open. While the wooden crate method works, Ultimaker shipped their very similarly sized printer with an innovative and very easy to remove carton, so there's no reason Creality couldn't have made this process less painful. One of the more noticeable aspects of the K1 Max is its speed. This printer is capable of a 16-minute Benchy. The printer comes with a pre-sliced version of the Benchy that performed at warp speed compared to the 41 minutes it takes to print when using Creality Print's default settings. Unfortunately, the exact Creality slicer settings used to achieve the 16-minute demo results are left as an exercise for the reader. I asked ChatGPT to both G-code files and the AI concluded that the faster version has layer height set to 0.25 millimeters instead of 0.2 millimeters, reducing the number of layers to complete the print. The AI also observed that the fast print used G-code at much higher feed rates, with some commands reaching up to 14,400 millimeters per minute. This is compared to the typical G-code speeds of typically 2,400 millimeters per minute to 3,400 millimeters per minute. But even using the default slicer settings and taking 42 minutes, the Creality K1 Max beat the Anycubic Cobra 2 at 58 minutes, the $7,000 Ultimaker S5 at 59 minutes, and the older Ultimaker 3 at 67 minutes. But the real speed benefit is in real world 3D printing. I'm printing a ton of 8x8 multiboard tiles for my new charging station. On the Ultimaker S5, the only other printer I have with a big enough bed, the tile takes 5 hours and 27 minutes. But on the K1 Max, it takes 2 hours and 46 minutes, or almost exactly half the time. I also have the Bamboo X1 Carbon, which is known for its speed. Although I don't have benchmarks to share with you, I will tell you that when it comes to single color printing using standard print settings, the K1 Max consistently outperforms the X1 Carbon. 
The K1 Max gets its first good for overall speed, but it also earns its first weird because Creality so poorly documented how users can repeat the settings the company shows in their demo Benchy. The printer uses a dual direct drive extruder with a ceramic heater that encloses the entire hot end. The hot end itself has a titanium alloy heat break and a steel nozzle, which is able to attain temperatures up to 300 degrees C. It's also a completely glass enclosed unit. As long as you're not Uncle Jesse and don't let the glass door fly open, it's a nice design. My only complaint is there's a glass plate on top of the unit and you have to find a place to put it when removing it to change filament. I want to take a moment to discuss the lighted build compartment because it contains a number of amenities that make the printing experience quite pleasant. First, the compartment itself is very well lit. Not only does that make prints easy to see on camera, it just makes the entire print look gorgeous, especially when using white filament. The K1 Max picks up another good just because of how aesthetically pleasing the print experience is. The printer scores another good for its camera. The company doesn't provide resolution specifications, but I'd guess it's 720p. Even so, it's very clear and provides great monitoring through the Creality print application. It's much better than the camera in the Bamboo X1 Carbon. While we're talking about Creality print, I want to call that out with a good. It's a very nice slicer. Creality software has always been a bit weird to the point that I've dreaded dealing with it when first setting up my printer. Either the firmware on the printer only allowed a certain low number of prints or the USB connection was inside the closed area of the printer or those weird Kuvacons the software was always annoying and a bit bonkers. But Creality print works. I load and slice my prints in Creality print. I send them over Wi-Fi to the printer, watch them on the camera and can even pull out a nice time lapse when it's all done. The software just works and that earns it another Good. Oh, and here's a quick tip. If you load a bunch of objects onto the build plate, Creality Print will sometimes give an error. In the Prepare tab, simply select All and then choose Merge Model from the drop-down menu. It won't touch your original STLs, but it will enable the printer to properly print a full build plate. Sometimes, rarely, the camera doesn't show a current view of what's on the printer. I've had a few occasions where the camera displayed a blank build plate when that build plate in fact had something on it. Usually this happened after a long print and I found it confusing, sometimes thinking that perhaps my long print never started. Once or twice, I've then resent the model to the printer only to have the camera update and show that the extruder was about to go slamming into a large piece of plastic already on the bed. Fortunately, the printer is in the room next to where I'm usually working, so a quick, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, followed by a mad dash to the fab lab to turn off the printer has kept disaster from happening. But that's a bad bug and it earns the K1 Max an ugly. <coughs> Also, the promotional materials talk about the camera as an AI camera. The company also claims the K1 Max uses an AI camera to watch over spaghetti failures, foreign objects, debris, 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 etc. It will alert you when an error occurs. Nope, no it won't. In all the time I've given this printer, and I've used it a lot, I've seen no sign whatsoever of AI anything. For making unfounded AI claims, the company gets another weird rating. I mean, it doesn't do the, make the printer any worse, but random AI washing is just unnecessary marketing hype. That brings us to the removable build plate. First, this works great for print removal. It's flexible and provides a clean surface for prints. Some of the coating did chip off early on, but there's been no visible harm to the print. You can easily buy a replacement build plate on Amazon. Auto leveling and build plate adhesion are also flawless. Good and good. But what gets this removable build plate itself a giant good are the alignment pins on the base and the alignment gaps on the build plate. Returning the build plate to the exact correct position is a matter of just pushing it back into those alignment pins. It's easy and super convenient compared to so many other build plates that require a lot of fussing to align to get them just right. Pricing for the K1 Max ranges from $749 with free shipping when purchased directly from Creality to a few hundred dollars more when purchased from Amazon, also with free shipping via Prime. At $749, it's a no-brainer. This machine is worth it. As it climbs an extra $200, it's hard to make the case for the higher price, especially given the one big complaint I have with this printer. It's as if a committee sat down purposely to design the least helpful filament management possible. Filament enters on the back and then has to make a really sharp right angle turn to get into the printer itself. Weird. Then it has to go through a filament runout sensor that likes to break off the filament right after the sensor, so it never notices the filament ran out. The filament goes through a Bowden tube coupling collet. That's fine, but the coupling clip is inside a slight depression so it doesn't easily slide out. 
That makes every filament change a fight unless you change the filament spool well before it runs out. Weird. And then to make things even more annoying, every single spool of Creality's Hyper PLA had at least one tangle in it, causing filament to break. That's how I know that the filament runout sensor doesn't work because the tension on the tangle always caused the break after the sensor. Ugly. The filament change process really annoyed me, but the actual printer is incredibly useful on a day-to-day -day basis. When filament runs out, I do dread the replacement process, but after a year of heavy work, this printer has otherwise been a joy to use. And with that, let's move on to some actual printing. I told you about Benchy performance. Actual print quality was quite good. It's not possible to visibly distinguish which Benchy was done with the factory provided G-code in 16 minutes and my sliced code in 42 minutes. I also printed another model the factory provided in G-code, this dragon. The pictures do not do it justice. It is spectacular. Speaking of spectacular, I also decided to print a T-Rex skull. In the large build area, it printed a very large skull. It too came out just great. I then moved on to the Ada Linda Dragon. This is an extremely difficult model to print support free, which is why I started using it to test. Printing at the size I usually do down here for testing printed out cleanly. But then I tried to scale it up and ran into some issues. Bed adhesion was great. That's worth noting because that's one place this print often fails because of how the feet sit on the bed. But my fails came most of the way through the print. I eventually decided to slow down the overall print speed and that solved the problem. And as you can see, this big guy is gorgeous. Finally, I printed the dice tower. The dice tower has a hinged drawbridge that is supposed to print in place, but most printers pretty much weld the bridge open. The K1 Max printed it properly and the hinge worked on the first try. So after a year of working this machine hard, do I recommend you buy it? Yes. Yes, I do. I really like this printer. Creality Print in local mode slices and manages the print over my land, making the process very straightforward. It's been a workhorse printing out most of the tiles I'm using in my ultimate charging tower project. I do wish that filament changes weren't such a pain, but I like this printer and it's become my go-to machine. At $750, it's well worth the price. That said, it's disappointing that you have to spend an extra $200 to buy it from Amazon. I've used many fine Creality printers over the years, and this is by far my favorite. It's a very nice printer. It's one of my favorite printers of all time across all brands. For Advanced Geekery, my name is David Gewertz. Go out there and make something awesome.